Hey everybody, my name is Eric. If you don't already know me, I'm an astrophysics student at the University of Calgary and a youth member of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada and a current volunteer with Team Astro based out of the Rothney Astrophysical Observatory just south of Calgary. In today's video, we're going to check out how you can change your viewing location and background in Stellarium to simulate what it might be like to look at the stars or planets on another planet or moon or wherever you might want to look at the stars from. If you want to change your location of where you're looking at the stars from within Stellarium, all you have to do is go over here to your uh, location window, which is a compass, and you'll get a map of the world among with other things. Perhaps the more intuitive thing to do is click around in this map to wherever you may be. Maybe you're in Australia, maybe you're in New Zealand, um, or Canada or the States up here. And that's the easiest way to change your location if you are trying to figure out your spot on Earth. But Stellarium is more powerful than that. You can also come down to planet down here and you see that my planet is listed as Earth. Uh, you can also change your planet to anything else. I'm going to choose the moon for this demonstration. And this is what the night sky looks like on the moon. Now, immediately this doesn't quite look right because we know that the moon doesn't have trees or grass. So how can we fix this? You're going to go to your sky and viewing options window. Click in there. Same place where we were fixing the star lore, but now you're going to go to landscape, which is represented by, well, a landscape. And it's set to this like French village um, default. You can change it to moon. And I'm pretty sure this is a 3D capture of the landing site in 1969. I'm not entirely sure. If you scroll around, you might see an astronaut somewhere. Yeah, like there's an astronaut here. So I think that's where this is coming from. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, feel free. I, I don't know that for sure. Um, I'm particularly shocked with how high these mountains are here because the horizon line is about down here where these cardinal points are located. So yeah, these um, mountains are pretty darn big. Anyways, you can see on the moon it automatically turns off the atmosphere for us down here um, because there is no atmosphere on the moon. So the sky is black even though it's daytime and the surface of the moon is lit up. If you want me to prove to you that I'm not on Earth right now and that I haven't just changed my settings and, you know, to, to change the background, uh, I'll go find Earth for you. And the way I'm going to do that is by changing my location. I'm going to go down to this crater here, Tycho. You can only see Earth if you're on like the southern part of the moon, because the moon is tidally locked to the Earth, so you always see the same face. So if you go up here, you literally won't be able to see it, because it's always going to be below the horizon line, because the moon is a sphere. So I'm going to go to the crater Tycho, um, or thereabouts. And then I will use the find feature. Oh, I think, I think I already have. But if you didn't know where Earth was, you could just say find. You could click Earth if you'd already typed it before, or you could type it, hit enter, and it will find Earth and center it on your screen. I'll use the zooming feature, which is just the forward slash. And there's Earth. So you can tell I'm not on Earth because I'm looking at Earth. We're on the dark side of the moon right now, um, so you can't really see the landscape. As a teaching side note, you can zoom in and use the paddle wheels down here to fast forward time a little bit to show Earth rotating in space. Speed it up a little bit more, and we're going to start seeing Earth phases, just like we see moon phases. Now we're in a waning crescent of the, of the Earth. And now you can't see anything except for these little red lines indicating where Earth is, because this is new Earth if you were standing on the moon. And of course, if you were standing on the Earth, this would be a full moon. So the phases are completely opposite. Just a teaching note if you're having a hard time uh, visualizing that or, or showing that to your students, this is a neat way of doing it, just by using these backward in time buttons or these forward in time buttons. Also is a nice way to show that the Earth is spinning on its axis. Okay, so because that was so much fun, why don't we do it again? You can go over to your location settings, and instead of moon, let's pick another famous location. You can pick Mars, and you can go anywhere in Mars. I'm not super familiar with Martian geography, but you could go wherever you want. I'll just pick like a reasonably central location. And of course, we still have our moon background from before, so we're going to need to go fix that in our sky and viewing options window, go to the landscape, which are these trees, and just flip it over to Mars. I imagine this is also a 3D capture from a rover that's been sent there or something like that, so 
pretty cool. I'm not entirely clear on if this is what it would look like. This should be what it looks like. I have the atmosphere here, and if I turned it off, that's what it would look like. And obviously, Mars has somewhere between Earth's atmosphere and no atmosphere, so it would have an atmosphere. What I'm a bit more curious about is sunrise. Let's see if it gets that right. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this sunrise here in the east. And no, they're not quite getting that right. So it looks like they're still showing you an Earth sunrise, even though you're on Mars. Um, in case you weren't aware, the Martian sunrise should be blue, and this is not. So they're just showing you an Earth sunrise uh, on Mars. So it's close. It's really close. You can change the ground um, and your physical location in the solar system, but you can't, unfortunately, quite change. I imagine they'll fix this eventually um, so that the atmospheric settings are identical to that of Mars. Okay, if you want to restore your location and everything, just go in here one more time. You're going to pick like this French thing. I can't even pronounce that, but it's the fourth one down from the top. And then just go up here to your compass, which is your location window, and where it says Mars, you're now going to want to go back and find Earth. And then in this little search thing, type in your location. If you click it, maybe? Yeah, if you click it. And then you're good. You're back to where you were. Again, the other way to restore your defaults is to just quit Stellarium and reopen it, as long as your default settings are saved here under the wrench, and you've clicked Save Settings when you had your Prefer Settings enabled. All right, so that's it for this video. That's everything I know about changing your location and your background in Stellarium. It's a very popular one with the kids um, and some of our Team Astro presentations to be able to show them what it looks like on the Moon or on Mars, for instance, and show them also what Earth looks like from those locations. So hopefully that video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll try and get back. Um, although I don't monitor my YouTube comments nearly as uh, much as I monitor my email, obviously. You can also get in touch by just reaching out to uh, Jennifer with uh, Team Astro and with the Ross Astro Astrophysical Observatory, and she will be able to get a hold of me. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.